Hello and welcome to another Warhammer The Old World video. Today I'm going to be painting a Tomb King that's going to be riding on the Bone Dragon. He's actually going to have an option of being on the Bone Dragon or on a foot base. The first colour up is going to be Army Painter Speed Paints Battleship Grey. You'll have to forgive my voice I'm afraid I'm loaded with a cold. I'm going to use this colour to paint the flesh tones of the Tomb King. His hands, his legs, backs of his legs and his face. This is as close as I have to what I would deem the box art colour for him. It does go on as a very light grey so it will get a wash to try and uh, darken it a little bit towards the end of the painting. So the next colour up is going to be Hoplite Gold. I'm going to use it for all, obviously all the gold areas that I deem to be gold on the Tomb King. His greaves, his arm braces, uh, his band around his head, parts of his chest. Quite a lot of the model is going to be gold. The collar around the back of his neck. I'm going to take my time here. I'm going to use a very fine, fine detailed brush. Again, I apologise for my voice, but I want to get this video out and I want to get you guys seeing how easy it is to paint these models. This is probably the hardest part of painting this model. It's not even hard. You just have to be careful, take your time, brace your hands so you have points of contact with a hard surface and use a fine detailed pointed brush especially for the parts around the back of the collar. We'll want to leave the white where we're going to paint the colours, you'll see anyway, as we go along. The next bit of video footage is me zooming in on the model and showing you exactly where I have painted gold. This paint flows really well, so you don't need to worry about hitting areas you don't want to hit. As long as you're careful, you'll do a, a neat job like I've done. The next colour up is Caribbean Ocean and I'm going to use it for areas of, especially of the collar, both the front and the back. The one around the top of his shoulders, the one around the back of his neck, also his hat and the two side flaps on his hat will get painted this colour. Also two small areas on his chest, just to add a little bit of colour, break up the gold. This really is a nice blue that Army Painter have come up with and just take your time. You really only need to put this paint on the model. It'll flow into the areas that you want it to flow into with very little effort. Also you don't need to worry about tiny mistakes that will happen. There will be very small errors made here. Don't worry about it. We're not going to go back over it with white paint again. We don't need to. We'll have an alternative when we're painting this model, and you'll see later on what that is. That's providing, of course, you haven't hit any major areas with this colour. Then you will need to get the white paint out again and touch up, but that's not a problem. You've seen how I've done that in other videos. The next colour up is going to be Grim Black. I'm going to use it for some of the items of clothing that he's wearing, or tatters of clothing, to be more precise. Everything seems to be two or three thousand years old that's hanging off this guy. I suppose that's to be expected when he's a, a Tomb King. Just like the rest of the speed paints, this one flows really well. It doesn't need any help with water or medium. Um, just take your time. Choose what areas you're going to use it on. I have seen one example of a Games Workshop Tomb King that they painted the cloak black. I'm going to not do that on this model. I want the cloak to be a brighter colour. The next colour up is going to be Poppy Red. 
and in keeping with my Tomb King scheme and the box art that GW have provided, it's going to be a red and blue and gold colour scheme. So you'll see the areas that I've painted blue. I'm going to do the alternate areas with this red. I'm also going to hit one of the gems on his chest with this red and also part of the crest on his belt buckle. I'm going to do red. This is a really nice bright red colour and it breaks the model up as you see. Adding that third colour to the base colours really helps. The Caribbean blue and this poppy red are the two slowest colours that's going to take you the most time and the gold but these are the, th the two or three main colors that are going to take your your bulk of your time when you're painting this again just take your time if you do make small minor mistakes don't worry about it if you make major mistakes go back in with the white paint again and redo what you've done Now this is another colour that I haven't used yet, it's called Murder Scene. It's a real black purple, ready purpley black colour. And I'm going to do the inside of the cloak with this colour. Because I want the inside and the outside to be two different colours. But tied together with the fact they're both going to be purple, just very different shades. Again, I must tip my hat to Army Painter. They've come out with another cracking colour. This is really nice. Unfortunately, it will have limited uses just because it's so dark. But anywhere I think I can put this from now on, it's probably going to get used. Now I'm going to use GW's contrast paint, Snakebite Leather, and it's only going to get used on very small areas here. There's some leather strapping holding on his greaves and his braces. They're going to, it's going to get put onto those areas very sparingly. I don't want him to be covered in leather. There is one small undergarment he appears to be wearing, which is going to get painted leather as well. And now for the cloak, I'm going to use Moody Mauve, which is a really nice purple. You'll see yourself. I'm really super happy with it. Just paint it on. Try not to let it pull up on the raised areas. I am, however, happy for it to pull in the recesses, although not too heavily. You can see for yourself here that this is a really nice purple colour, really deep. Now to cover up some of those very small mistakes that I've made around the colour, especially between the blue and the red. I'm going to go over it with Reichland Flesh. What that's going to do is it's going to flow into the recesses around each colour, providing a shade and hiding some of my small mistakes. You'll see for yourself how exactly that works if you try it on your own miniatures. You do still need to be precise when you're painting these colors, but you don't need to be ultra precise. You don't need to be anal about it. This stuff and other washes like it will cover a multitude of sins. The next color up is gonna be Vallejo Game Color Silver, and I'm gonna use it because it's one of the brightest silvers that I've got. It's a normal thick paint and all I wanted to do is put a edge on the weapon. You'll see exactly what I do. I use the side of the brush and I just drift up and down the side of that sword until I put a nice edge on it. It helps break up the gold colour. 
while still looking very royal, in my opinion. And now I'm on to the basing. And as I said, I was going to magnetize this model, I am. I want you to look here at the Bone Dragon. And you'll see that I've added a strip of steel impregnated self-adhesive rubber. I got this off Amazon, along with a bunch of 3mm magnets. I originally bought it to magnetize my movement trays, so my models weren't falling around in transit and during gaming. Also, I realized it would be really handy for models like this. You'll see here that I've simply put two of the magnets on a strip of the magnetic material, and I'm gonna individually glue the Tomb King's feet to each magnet. Because this magnet magnetic material isn't polarity dependent, it doesn't matter which way round magnets go, you don't need to get the poles correct. Basically just stick two of the magnets to the material and then glue each magnet to the Tomb King's foot or whichever character you happen to have. This is a good way of magnetizing your models for to swap between chariot, monster or on foot. This only takes a very small dab of super glue and then I'm going to dump one of his feet onto it and I'm going to prop him up so he dries without falling over and again a very small amount of super glue you don't want to glue the magnet to his foot and then you don't want to glue the magnet to the magnetic material just take your time and be patient and this will work I guarantee it And there he is, the finished model, and I think he looks suitably regal. I'm really happy with him, for the amount of time and effort that's went into him. I'll put links in the description to the material that I used, the magnetic material and the magnets, which are available on Amazon. The links will probably only be valid for UK people, or European people, but the same material will be available in America, of course it will be, and it will be available around the rest of the world. Amazon has uh, warehouses everywhere these days. Hopefully this video has been of some use to you, you've learned something, or at least you've got the confidence to tackle these miniatures yourself now. I'd like to thank you for watching, and again I'd like to apologise for my bout of man flu that I've got. Um, it's the most deadly type of flu, as you're well aware. But hopefully I'll survive it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.